Good morning. This is Greg McIntyre with the Elder Law Report. And good morning to Western North Carolina, WCSL and WTZQ out of Hendersonville. And WCSL out of Shelby. Morning, Hayden. How are you doing this morning? I'm great, Greg. How are you? I, I mean, you know, I've never been better. Yeah, I'm ready for snow, though. I'm, I'm all prepared. What are you talking about, Hayden? It's the middle of summertime. <laughs> well, my weather report this morning said Saturday and Sunday snow. I can't, I, maybe if it snows, I can breathe, because I haven't been able to breathe for the last month. Yeah, tamp down a little bit the pollen, possibly. I don't know. And my car's been yellow, and I can't breathe. And it's like... Uh, Instead of Christmas in July, it's like summer in February and March. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, global warming, I guess. I don't know. Um, if you believe in that sort of thing. So, so uh, you know, hey, um, we've got some special guests in the studio today. Yes, we do. We have Rebecca Higgins, uh, who is president of the DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution. And she's uh, done a seminar and had us speak to her group. And then you have uh, Joe Seidel. Who Joe Seidel, a partner in crime, no doubt about it. We've done tons of events together, and everywhere I go, he seems to show up. No, I'm just kidding. Everywhere he goes, I follow. He does a great job planning these things. In fact, we've got one tomorrow that Joe's really carried the heavy, done all the heavy lifting on at Bayada Home Healthcare, uh, based out of Shelby, North Carolina, which he runs. Um, and he's over more than just that. He, Joe does a ton. Um, but he's got 200 people coming to, to, to a health symposium tomorrow that's going to be, so shout out to Delta Sigma Theta sorority out there who's going to bring in 200 people, including some kids and things like that. We're going to have McIntyre Elder Law coloring books there. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. I'm not kidding. We're going to do it. Hey, we're going to pull it together tonight. Right? To so you gave me an idea. Really <laughs> right? We're going to get, get pictures of me, of me drafting papers and... Uh, Meet with clients. We're gonna get one with you on the phone. It's gonna be awesome. Kids love that type of stuff. So, and then and then, and then we're gonna do. Uh, and, and you know what? It, it's a it's a pretty special occasion for me today, because Hayden has been with me two years today, and Susie in our office had a big breakfast for her this morning. We had a great time. Right. And I got a gift and a gift certificate. You did, you did, yeah. yeah. And we've had Diane with us, you know, for over a little over a year now, and yeah. you for two years. I mean, we've done so many memory, memories in such a short period of time. It seems like a lot longer than that to me. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot longer than that. I mean, how much we, have we done? It, yeah. it feels like the fit of an old shoe. Yeah, I mean, hundreds of seminars, yeah. hundreds of seminars, tons of radio shows for going on probably a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, just a lot of other work with clients, and we've helped a ton of people. So thank you for everything that you do for me and for our office, and it's been a pleasure learning from you and working with you. Thank you. I took this job full-time. Uh, it evolved into a full-time job that I absolutely love. And no, you, because you of took that you job part-time, and I dragged you <laughs> into a full-time role. <laughs> anyway, but so. I love it, and I love what you do. That's, that's part of the reason I'm right. not retired. Right, and you did tons of radio before you started working with me, right? I did tons of radio. No, you didn't. No, no I didn't. No radio experience. <laughs> I was just like, hey, here's a mic. Say That's something. right. All right. So, so okay. So, so hey, um, you know, we've, we've announced the topic. We're ready to go. Let's go to your happy place. Let's go to Hayden's happy place. We need to have some little music for Hayden's happy place. I was like so Mr. Mr. Rogers Theater or something. What do we so have? Prepared. What do we have for Hayden's happy place? Well, let me make a little noise here. A little we were talking about seminars, and I couldn't find anything interesting about seminars. Okay. But I did Except find something that I thought was very happy. Um, I happen to be a pet lover, dogs mostly, and I found out that as of now, about six and a half million cats and dogs per year are winding up in the county's animal shelters. But it's a positive change from the last it's time. It's just just our county or no, other county. This is, this, this is, Nationwide. Nationwide yes. averages, yes. not picking on counties here. Okay. Uh, but the last time the ASPCA looked at it, in 2011, the figure was 7.2 million. So a lot has been accomplished at trying to reduce the number of dogs taken to shelters, and especially the dogs that are, are uh, euthanized. And um, right now, on the adoption front, things are getting better too. 3.2 million shelter animals are being adopted every year now, up from 2.7 million 
In other words, an additional half million cats and dogs are being adopted out of shelters annually. Right. And one more bit, uh, more pets entering shelters as strays are being reclaimed by their owners. 710,000 lucky dogs and cats now versus 649,000 in 2011. And I can skip over a little bit because what I really want to say is there's one way that you can help now, and that's to make adoption your first option. There are still far too many cats and dogs, amazing animals who need and deserve loving homes. That's great. That's very happy, Hayden. And, you know, it sounds like as a nation we're being more responsible. You know, I've done a, a lot of different cases involving animals and things like that. I mean, I really have. Mm -hmm. And uh, made that argument. I've made arguments that the reason people are, are keeping animals or hoarding animals or keeping them in home, there are people who do that. And, oh, and, yes. uh, it, it, even to try to take care of strays is because of the fear that if they go to the shelter, then they're going to be euthanized. Yes. Right? I mean, I've, you know, I've actually tried to leverage and make that argument uh, and, and, uh, and been very successful at it in the past. In a past life when I do, I used to do a lot of trial work. Right. Okay. So, well, it's in your wills. It's in your what? Yeah, it's, it's in your wills or the trust that they have the uh, responsibility to take care of pets. So, all right, well, okay, so we draft that into powers of attorney. That's where you're seeing it, okay, you. is that, that you have the power to manage somebody else's pets and, and do things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, all, but also people will leave money set aside in trust for a pet, like $2,000 to take care of Fido, mm -hmm. and, and appoint somebody as, as his caretaker. Mm -hmm. People do that and leave money set aside. Um, in larger metro areas, you'll see people set up pet trust on a regular basis, and we can draft pet trust as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, that are just specific pet trust, okay? But you'll see that drafted in the wills from time to time. In our family, we know who's going to be responsible for the pets if anything should occur. When right. We think about that. So. You know, pets have become like, uh, not to get off track, but they have become somewhat like babies now to some people or children, you know? Mm -hmm. They're children. It's a good show just to the relationship between pets and animals and how it relates to longevity. We'll have to make a note of that. And pet trust. Oh, yeah, okay. And pet trust. Mm -hmm. We'll do yeah. that. Do that in the future. So today, just to move on to our topic, we have Joe Seidel here in Rebecca Higgins, Joe Seidel with Bayada Home Healthcare. Um, you know, Bayada, Joe, nobody can introduce Bayada Home Healthcare better than you. Uh, you're a great ambassador for them. What is Bayada Home Healthcare? Thanks, Rick, for letting us uh, come on today. I really sure. appreciate that. So, um, Bayada Home Healthcare, we have been in existence since uh, 1975. We are the largest privately owned home care company in the country. Uh, we, we now operate in 22 states, and we are getting ready to enter into our fifth country. Um, so we provide services basically in home care services basically from the cradle to the grave. We provide pediatric services, we provide adult services, we provide geriatric services. It could be from uh, small things such as helping someone maybe with companionship, uh, up to including uh, taking care of people who might be on a uh, have a tracheostomy or a ventilator. Uh, in some locations, we do hospice. We also have services for those with intellectual disabilities. So, such a huge range of options that we can have. But the most important thing that we do is we enable people to stay in the comfort of their own home where they want to stay. Right. I mean, who raises you know raise your hand out there if if your first choice is to go to uh, to an institutionalized setting for care like a nursing home or assisted living facility. And hey, there's great places out there, not knocking them, and they, they serve their purpose, and they Absolutely. have their role. And home health care isn't for everyone. But, you know, it may be. You just have to contact Bayada and find out how you can pay for yours, and if you're prepared. Um, Joe, how can people call you, not only just to, hey, I need care now, or we're going to check and see if you can come out and take care of our loved one, but and, and provide, really, even skilled nursing level of care, in home for an individual or it could be something as simple as help with bathing could be something as simple as getting them going in the morning and getting them dressed could be something as simple as doing the grocery shopping tidying up around the house helping that individual i know that that's your broad range of services and i know so much about it because you're such a great communicator and you've taught me over the years so so joe how can someone get in touch with you and get in touch with Beata to find out more yeah. about it yeah, if you call our Shelby office, it's 704-669-4000. And uh, we, we really try to, to be a community resource. Uh, we want to talk to people. We know that not everyone's going to choose our services. Um, but
But we have, um, you know, we have an information confirmation office which allows us to check your benefits to tell you what you have. We could, call, we could, you know, you have to give us permission, obviously, but we could find out, you know, do you have a long-term care insurance policy? Uh, does your does your commercial insurance policy pay for the services? Uh, Medicare, Medicaid, the waiver programs, several so uh, waiver programs, and and obviously we also do veterans uh, benefits. We do private pay, and I know you're a, a you know a veterans administration certified attorney. Certified attorney, and, and uh, you know uh, you do a great job of presenting those services for veterans. So there's a lot of options to pay for this, and I think it's just a matter of just you know. I sometimes liken it to building a house. Not every house is the same. You know, if you say you want a house, you want three bedrooms. Well, you want that two-story, one-story. Do you want, you know, flat roof? Do you want, you know, slope roof? How, how do you want this? And so, for everybody, this is a this is an emotional decision. So we like to sit down, find out what their needs are, and figure out how we can meet their needs, how we can figure out a payer for them, and uh, and just kind of work through it on an individual basis. So again, our number is seven zero four six six nine four thousand. We'd be happy to talk to anybody. And uh, walk them through this uh, this journey. Jim, when's the best time to call? Is it when your family's in an emergency situation and in a pinch, or is it ahead of time to see? You know, hey, if this happens to me in the future, how can I pay for it? Yeah, I, I, obviously, the the, the sooner the, the, the sooner the better. <laughs> yeah, you kind of pitched underhand to me on that one, Greg. That's so sure. kind of knocked that one out of the park. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, the sooner the better. But uh, I mean, we literally have people that call us up and they need services this afternoon. Right, and uh, and we have we have gone out and opened those cases and provided care starting that afternoon. But you know, just like you with, with your elder law, you know, you're sitting down, and you're working with people. Um, it's always better to prepare. Hey, you I do the emergency I mean, services. It costs so much less. It's so much better for peace of mind to put things in place ahead of time with the state planning than it is to come to me in an emergency situation and say, "Hey, I need the veteran benefit right now," or "I need the Medicaid uh, benefit right now." We handle that. And in fact, we have departments that are set up to handle those situations, but it's easier and less costly for the family if they plan ahead. Yeah, and, and same with us. And, and, it, and it also helps take out, you know, if the planning is done ahead of time, it helps take out the emotional piece because this is a very, very emotional decision. When people finally get to that place, uh, they're exhausted. They've, they've, you know, we, there, there are millions of, of unpaid caregivers in the country that take care of their loved ones. And, and many of them get to that place where you know, they're, they're just, they just can't do it and, and, and it becomes very emotional. So if they can do it ahead of time, it can take some of that emotion out of it. Um, you know, another thing we, we don't talk about often, but we also provide respite services. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the caregiver just needs a break. They need to go out of town. They, they might be, you know, a wedding with a family member out of town and you need Look somewhere to take care. Look at life expectancies of familiar caregivers. It's, it's diminished, it's decreased. Yeah. Because, and many times, family members who are giving care Predecease, die before the person they're caring for. Yeah, I, which I is not how, fair. Yeah, I don't know how caring. many times I've seen that in my career, and it's uh, it's very true. And again, the the, the the sooner that people can plan for this, again, the, the emotion gets taken out of it, the stress gets taken out of it to some degree, and uh, so. But uh, we're we're there whether it's pre-planning or I need you right now. Can right. you come out today? So so the name of the show is. Seminars and speeches, okay? Bringing the education to you, to your family, and to your group. And that's part of what we're doing here on the radio show, is, is, is bringing you quality content as a community service to say, look, know your options, know what's out there. We do this on a regular basis, and when I say me, or we, I mean me, our firm, McIntyre Elder Law, with, with quality individuals and just really, really smart people like Joe Seidel and Bayana Home Healthcare. Joe and I have partnered and done a number of seminars together and speeches together. And when, I guess, Hayden, when you wrote the show today, right, yes. and outlined the show, you said speeches because we do give a lot of speeches for groups as well. Mm -hmm. We'll come in and run Veterans Day for a senior center. We've done that before and given speeches, right? Yes. And MC the senior center, Veterans Day, right? So we do that. Very often. We do, yeah. And, and uh, how many seniors are there in West, senior centers are there in Western North Carolina? I don't know. That's Quite a few, yes. right? So, so to bring, you know, and I'm a veteran, so I, I feel a kindred bond with, with our other veterans, and we do veterans benefits and planning. You know, it's our, it's our job, and it's my mission. Hayden's had me on tour, uh, and she's a, 
a, a, a grueling manager, I guess, on tour consistently, a couple hundred seminars over the last couple of years, I guarantee you, at least that. And, and, uh, and I want to keep that up. I, f I don't want to fall off. I want to keep that up. I want to keep that spirit alive in Western North Carolina from Charlotte to Asheville. Okay? Well, uh, we're working hard to educate people because there's a lot that everybody assumes they know, but a lot that they have no idea that can help them prepare and make their better decisions. So that's part of our focus is education. And when we come in, we talk to you about that pre-planning. We give foundational, foundational seminars. We talk to you about how to save your heart, home, how to save the farm. I've got Saving the Farm, the book I wrote, in my hand right now. Okay, And, and those are things that are great for church groups. They're great for sororities. They're great for senior centers. They're great for any group. Book Churches. clubs. Book clubs. I've given <coughs> seminars from anywhere from one person to 100 people. Mm -hmm. Okay? And tomorrow, and 200 people. Probably be our biggest one tomorrow, yeah. I guarantee you. And I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm getting excited. one coming up at Gardner Webb is coming up at 100, too. All right, Gardner Webb's mm -hmm. coming up. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, so we love to do these, and, and, and I'm a yes man. I tell, uh, if you've seen that maybe yes man with Jim yes. Carrey, always say yes. yes. That's right. We'll figure it out, okay? So if you want to bring this type of quality information to your group, I know, Joe, you'd be probably game to go anytime. Anytime you're, there's an availability, right? To do yeah, it. we're we're uh, you know again this is part of our community resource. Sure. Uh, there, there's so many people who don't know what's available, and like you, um, you know, with your veterans information, most veterans don't even know what's available to them. Right. And uh, you know there's there's a lot more available. So yeah, uh, we we'd be happy to go and speak in, in uh, anywhere, basically anytime to any group. American uh, Legions. We've done. I'm a member Legion. of the American Legions, yeah, and we'd love American to go speak to American Legions. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, so, you know, if, if you want to get in touch with us and if you want to book us to come out, and we do this free of charge, and we generally provide a lunch as well. Sometimes we've had groups provide lunch for us. Hayden, how do people get in touch with us to schedule us? Well, locally, our number in Shelby is 704-259-7040. But we're all over social media. If you look for Greg's... Um, Website and Why don't you coming? like our Facebook page? It's McIntyre sure. Elder Law, and you can watch our show live or listen to it on the radio. We we put out a veteran show as well every Monday, and uh, and just really good content there. Or you can go to our website mcelderlaw.com. That's mikecharlieelderlaw.com, and sign up for our e newsletter, and that's going to inform you of all the seminars and speaking events that we have going on. Right. That's right. Thank you. And you know, speaking of people who have given us lunch to come in, <laughs> and provided oh, us very lunch, nice lunch. Very nice lunch. I have Rebecca Higgins here, president of Daughters of the American Resolution, Revolution, who meet every when it, it was on Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. Thursday at Thursday at eleven o'clock or noon. Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock. I thought it was eleven. So Thursday at eleven at the Cleveland Country Club, correct? That is correct. Now, Daughters of American Revolution, are there more groups in other counties? Yes, there are. And Probably throughout the country, right. and actually worldwide now. We okay. have chapters overseas um, in England, believe it or not. Wow. Daughters, of, Daughters the American of the American Revolution in England. Exactly. That seems... Um, so we're, we're a very, very large, yes it is, yes, <laughs> they keep an eye on us over yeah, there. Sure. Uh, it's a worldwide and we're a service organization and right. we're only for women 18 years or older and we're all descended from a patriot, which is someone who either fought in the American Revolution or provided material support. Right. As a matter of fact, one of my ancestors actually provided whiskey for the soldiers. It's very important. It, they thought it was. Right. right. For medicinal purposes only. I'm exactly. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so tell me, you know, you're the president. You're not only a member, you're the president. I have all the power. You have all the power. Yeah. Yes. And, and it was a great lunch, by the way. Okay. I appreciate Glad you having us in. So, so it's a, a service organization. Just tell us a little bit more about the Daughters of the American Revolution. That's, I'm, a, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated. Okay. I want to. I want to join, but you know. <laughs> but you can be a hodar, okay. which is a husband 
of, of a daughter of, of, of the American oh, okay. Revolution. I need to have my wife check and see if Yes, she's... and we will find you an ancestor. Okay, we, need we to have find an we have ladies who specialize in doing the genealogy. Right. And we will trace it right back there and find you someone. I'll, I'll talk to Stan about it. I'm sure she'll be thrilled about me signing her. <laughs> <laughs> we would oh, yes. love to have her. We would love okay. it. And we really appreciated you coming to speak to us. And it was actually one of our larger meeting turnouts when right. you came to speak. I think we had about 25 I very ladies. much enjoyed it. it uh, was, you, they were very participative. It's very nice for me when people ask questions and we can go back and forth. It's a different event each time. Exactly. Yeah. And it's such an important topic no matter what your age is because if it you're looking at elder care for your parents, or right. you're looking at care for yourself, right. or in some cases, you know, how are your children going to help you? Or in, like in my case, we don't have children. Right. So what are we going to do when we get old enough to need more help? Sure. Um, and a shout out to the elder, well, to the uh, to Joe here with the Bayada Health Care, that uh, I cared for my mother-in-law for two and a half years in our home. And it's one of the more difficult things I ever did. And it does exhaust the caretaker, and it is very stressful. And I wish I had known about the resources that were available to help care for my mother-in-law. It was only in the last month or so that she lived with us that I was started to get help from outside. And it made a difference. Well, we'd be happy to come and speak to your group and share what we do. Oh, I've written you down. <laughs> be looking for a call next well, he year. A great, he does a great job. Great Fantastic. Job. Amazing job. So. Well, he's got a tough act to follow. He's, yeah. He's oh. going to have to up his game now that we've heard from you. <laughs> you know, that that sounds, you know, I know you're joking, but if you if you present and, and you get into presenting some, and uh, for me, being competitive, it does make you elevate your game if you speak alongside a very good presenter. It does. Game, I've been thinking, game on, Greg. Game on. <laughs> well, I've been thinking about that sitting here. Is how can I be value added to this radio show? I've been sitting over here quiet as a mouse. Well, I've got to go. I've got to go home tonight and put together an entire video production. That's what I'm going to have to do. Uh -huh. yeah. Because yeah. I know I've got to get some cute uh, up. Video. Challenge in public. Challenge. <laughs> so. Well, thank you both for coming on, okay? I very much enjoy presenting to your group, the Daughters of the American Revolution. It's a great um, group and, um, and charitable organization, right? And I service. You guys do charitable and service-oriented work all the time. So thank you for what you do. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you for allowing me to come present. And thanks for... Uh, for, for feeding me when I came, right? We were happy the to. the other way around? Yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you, Joe, for doing so many shows with us and, uh, and so many pr presentations with us and, uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, I look forward to what the future holds. Yeah, thanks, Greg. I always enjoy doing presentations with you. And I think yeah. uh, our combined story is, is very compelling to a lot of people. So thanks for working with us. A absolutely. Absolutely. We, you know, when we do one of these events, we really try to involve the audience and really try to, to educate them on both what their options are for, for me from a legal perspective to help them save their hard-earned money and property um, and let them know what health care, the range of health care benefits that are out there for them, uh, including veterans benefits. So I always cover and hit veterans benefits in a general seminar. Now we do specialized seminars as well which are just hitting specific topics like veterans aid and attendance or, or we do one, you know, we could do Medicaid crisis plan. We do them for veterans organizations like American Legion hosts, or um, like for seminars we know around Veterans Day, we'll sure. produce one there, and then you've been speaker many times, as we said before, for Veterans Day events. And sure. Absolutely. Very moving I love doing speaker. That. I'm very honored. Yeah, you talk about your grandfather, and it's a, a very warm and humanizing Oh, I'd love to play the interview that I did when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need to do, I guess we've got... Uh, uh, you know, I'd love to play that for our radio audience too coming up. Maybe yeah. Veterans Day. Maybe Veterans Day will do that. Yeah, about World War II and his his time yes. in World War II. Yes. A lot of fun. And uh, hey, could you tell us what we have coming up? Yes, I'll mention a couple of things. We've already talked about the Delta Sigma Theta event tomorrow, which is closed um, at, at about 200 people. 
Uh, we do on uh, Facebook Live on Mondays, Lunch with a Veteran at noon, and we have Evan Thompson, who coincidentally is Greg's father-in-law, but he is also the commander of the District 23 um, American Legion, I guess it's, a, it's the district, and also he is uh, Patch 92. Western North Carolina District, Thank he's you. the district commander. Yeah. And, uh, but he's going to talk to us about uh, veterans' benefits the veterans organizations and anything veteran he and greg will have a have a nice conversation about that i'll wear my veteran my, my legion hat which okay. i just got my legion hat he just brought it by to me this All week right. i'll wear my hat yeah you wear good yes um next friday on the elder law report we have matt melvin he's with the shelby police department and he is a roving speaker um, and he uh, was recommended to us by Jeff Ledford, who has done these speeches before, he's about scams. Yes, Jeff's the police chief. He's going to talk to us about scams. He's going to talk to us about the ones that seniors are being targeted at and how to recognize them and, you know, how to, in general, protect yourself from having someone take your pot of gold on, on uh, St. Patrick's Day, okay. on the 17th. Okay. And then on the... Is that St. Patty's Day, the 17th? 17th. So, Every okay. Year. Okay. Yep. Are we going to dress up like leprechauns? Well, that's a surprise. Let's do it. Okay. That's a surprise. <laughs> All right. Check, check Greg's Facebook page. Okay. All right. Um, on the 21st, not Monday, which is our usual lunch with a veteran day, we're going to have it on Tuesday, on the 21st, instead of the 20th. We're going to feature Rick Barryell, who is the pastor of Elizabeth Baptist Church. He's a former Army Ranger. And that ought to be an interesting uh, oh, story, how he transitioned from an army ranger, which were pretty bad dudes, yeah. uh, into a pastor. That he's an author and author? Yes, he's written the book. Yes, uh, yes he is. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see, I, I want to tell you about the 31st. We're going to do a show, and we're calling it Should I Stay or Should I Go? And Charles Tarleton is going to be talking to us about upfitting your house as you grow older for level floors and wide doorways to accommodate walkers and wheelchairs and all the things that need to be done to so that you can weather in your age, your, your, your older years, or moving into a facility that is already prepared and, and has the uh, functionality that you need. So that'll be an interesting. We've got video footage of those types of homes that are built too. We need to walk through. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll post that uh, in the comments on that show. Right. After we do that, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we've got on the 23rd, the Dover YMCA uh, is hosting us for a seminar, and we're calling it the Get It, Get it Together seminar oh, because we Debbie have Vaughan? yes, sure. we've invited yeah. Debbie Vaughn to participate, and we're going to talk about how you get your materials together so everyone will know what we need. Thank you very much, Hayden. I very much appreciate it, okay? And uh, we're going to sign off. Thank you, Milton, for hosting us today. Appreciate that. And it's quitting time. It's quitting time. You ought to play me the quitting time music. I love that. I love that. So have a great day out there. We'll see you next week. If you need to contact us again, call us at 704-259-7040. Like us on Facebook. Or visit us to sign up for the e-newsletter at mcelderlaw.com. Have a great day. Thank you. And a great you. weekend. Just right at 10 30. Right in the middle of the so Yeah, that's right. That's right. We had that happen a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so we want to be, be aware of you know, yeah, things. Right yeah. I was just trying to tell you one minute. That, and really it was. It was like 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> that was my military thing or something. Like, you know, wrap it up or something. Yeah. I knew exactly what you were talking about. All right. Thank you. That was fun. That was great. It goes by like that. It right? does. It yeah. does. Thank you very much <laughs> for being you. on. Thank Pleasure meeting you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, I'll see you Saturday. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't know if I have a... Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 which Saturday? If you want to call, you got to call at 9 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock. I won't be at 9 o'clock. I've got some business cards probably in the car. 12, yeah. and, I, and we I'm have to be that. there and through by 12.30, so I don't know if I'm going to make it or not, but I'm going to try. I'll probably... No.
I was going to ask you guys, are you involved in the military appreciation event at the high school Did on you see the night? Uh, no, I'm going to a meeting about there, it this afternoon. There's my phone. My, I've got some cards, yeah. but they're probably in the car, so if you want to set up. Uh, yeah, she has gone into assisted living. We were in okay. Augusta, Georgia, and she went into assisted living when we moved okay. here. But I tell you what, that was, that was a doozy. And yeah. You don't know what you don't know until you get in. And, and we talk to people. Don't don't know. Know. And we talk to people all the time, and you know, and, and, and so. But if you want us to come speak at your group, we'd be Thank happy you. to do that. Um, yeah. The, the, when I hit the learning curve was when we were in the emergency room with her, and of course it's the middle of the night, and they said, "Do you want to talk to social work services?" Well, my husband's in the army, or was at that time in the army, and if you talk to social work services in the army you're in a lot of trouble. Right. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I didn't push her. She just yeah. kind of fell <laughs> over. She told me to do that. Right. Um, but then come to find out, you know, I turned it down. And then later I found out, no, you do want to talk to them. They do the wheelchairs and the Sure, sure, they'll help. Yeah. All these things. And I, I thought it was more long You were scared life. they were coming after you. Yeah, they, they were going to come to some state yeah. now. No, no, away, you no, know? no, no, don't they touch do. services. They do, they do a lot. I mean, they do. They, they, yeah. they, they say sure. garbage, and once I figured out where the people sure, talk yeah. to. Sure. And, and again, we, it's, kind of, it's kind of a twofold thing. People don't want to hear about us when they don't need us. Yeah. And we've also done a poor job of telling what we do. So that's why Greg and I have been doing these seminars so much. We're just trying to get out of the community and I remember and trying to tell as many people ahead of time as we possibly can. And hopefully they don't all have Teflon brain, that some stuff sticks, and, and when they need us, they know who to call. A few years ago, I remember just deciding quite a few years ago, you know, hey, I'm gonna do elder law, and I work with, with somebody to do our social media and things. I said, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're going to totally switch from the general practice. We're just going to do elder law. That's all I'm interested in anymore. That's all we're going to do. She said, what's elder law? And I'm like, okay, well, this is what it is. She said, eh, Greg, I don't think, I don't know if that'll work. I don't think anybody knows what elder law is, right? So, so that's when I went on a mission to educate everybody on what elder law is. And that's a big part of it, or what home health care is and why they need it. It's a feel-good thing for me because everything we're doing is helping someone. It's not getting uh, somebody out of jail who probably ought to be there. I was, I was referring somebody to you this so week. And he's already replied. Oh, great. Yeah. And your fans at the American Legion World Series kept me up right. You guys had those fans. They're like, oh, save uh, my we, bacon. We got in trouble with the stress balls because the kids were throwing them. They asked <laughs> No more stress balls. <laughs> we got we we we've got Bob. We're going to take them again this year. But uh, so, well, thank you both for coming on. So, so is that your husband is in the army? If it's not just yes, the army, was in the army. Twenty-seven years. Okay. So my dad was twenty year army. My wife's dad was twenty years Air Force. So we got to mixed marriage <laughs> overseas at all. We were. We were in Germany for three years. Where about? Um, Kitzigan and Würzburg. Okay. He was in Kitsigan. I worked for the JAG office in Berkeley. Yes, yeah, she was in the JAG. Uh, worked in the JAG office over there. Yeah. I, uh, that was that was fun. I bet. It was I, more I, fun looking back on yeah. it. I, 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 I played a junior high basketball tournament in Würzburg and a high school soccer match uh -huh. in Würzburg. So we lived in Heidelberg, Nuremberg, Stuttgart, and Augsburg. Oh wow! So, well, you know, Würzburg is closed. They closed Würzburg and Kitsigan. It's gone. I'm sure it's. I haven't been there in years. I'm going back to England next month as a relative, so... Uh, uh, it was an adventure. I'll give it that. Well, the, I get to hang out with my buddy Michael Jordan. Yes. I thought he was taller. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, and can we play a part? I'm sure All right, Greg, see you tomorrow? I appreciate it, uh, yeah, so I'll be there in the morning. We're going to be there, you know, Nine or so. Yeah, I think I'll get started ready. Yeah. Email. Stuff. They told us we can't really show up until 9.30. We're going to show up at 9.00. If you want to go, I'll hey, see you tomorrow. Rebecca, nice to meet good, you. Good to see you. See you, Joe. Have a good day, bud. Right.